Hello and welcome to the third episode of the Art Department podcast. Um, with me again is Emmanuel Shu and myself, Jan Urscho. And today we're going to talk about software. And uh, yeah, I think we all know the big question that we get all the time or that some of us get. What brush do you use? What software do you use? Um, and we want to talk a little bit about what's really behind the question. Does, it, does software really matter? Does the brush matter? And um, all questions around that. So, yeah, let's get started. Let's do it. Okay. So, yeah, um, I think we've all... So, I mean, you know, <laughs> the, the easiest thing to, to start with is just like, well, what do you use? What do I use? Yeah, I think uh, everybody who's following me knows that um, I'm very, <laughs> very deep into Blender right now. Um, and... But I, I, I didn't I didn't start using Blender, of course. Um, I think I because you did you just switched recently, like maybe like a year ago um, or something. I, I, I think that that's when I fully made the switch. I um, mm. I, I came from of, of course I, I came from Photoshop and two D, and then I actually started. I um I, my my three D journey started actually a long time ago. Um, when I look back now, it's like 10 years. And um, I, it, it basically happened when I was, was in, in Lucasfilm and they, they want you to use Maya um, because that's their, their, their uh, product of choice that's really deeply integrated into their pipeline, which is something we can talk about later. And then I jumped into mm -hmm. Modo because it became popular um, around like 2012. I think a lot of concept artists uh, started using Modo and um, I think a lot of them still do now. And I used that for a long time, and then I think a friend uh, tried to turn me on to Blender, and I, I was like, yeah, that was okay. Um, and uh, at some point, I, I, I started using it, and um, I, I kind of held, held back. I was like, okay, why, why can't Blender do it the same way that Modo does it? Which, mm. which was something I was really used to. And it, it, it took me yeah. some time to realize that, hey, um, actually Blender does it in a different way and it's actually a more intuitive way. And, mm. and so I think, about, I think about a year ago, um, I made the complete switch and, and, and stopped using Modo. I still have my old license that I used to like open up old Modo files and convert them, but I don't, I don't, I don't use it actively anymore, actually. So, yeah, I, that that's uh, you know you really took off doing the Blender stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it became for the last year. <laughs> it became really popular, and um, I think it's due to the due to the fact that um, it's a very intuitive program, and it's it's you can you can for me it's it's basically you can look up stuff yourself and figure it out. And one of yeah. one of the big things is is that you need that with a when a software becomes really complex, what you need is a good community and uh, an easy way to troubleshoot things. And unfortunately, with Modo, that has never been the case. It was very difficult to Google stuff and to find solutions for your problems. And um, if you compare Blender to something very complex like Houdini or whatever, I mean, I know it's it's two very different programs, but let, let's say you want to learn either of them. If you, if you look at something very complex, it's it's very punishing and very difficult. Of course, and more intuitive. And and better, and, yeah. and but there's like it's it feels like I can try out things in Blender and it it doesn't necessarily break and it, actually something useful comes out of it. Um, whereas in other apps, you like like I have no idea what I'm doing, and you need yeah. to grind through a lot of learning yeah, that's, material. That's 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 hard. Uh, but I think the, one of the things uh, I think a lot of people want to know is probably you know why uh you know what what software really has to do with all this uh yeah. because i think ultimately in the end i mean it's it's like uh what Craig mullins and i were talking about one time he was telling me that you, you know the simpler you make your tools the easier it is to create good art because when you introduce complexity in there you're adding one more layer one more layer one more layer your renders get more longer your shaders yeah. get better you know all that so you know we're you know on this episode we're just really we're not advocating you know yeah. to get complex mm. but um the trend right now is going where people are coming up with these renders and you have these tools that will allow you to you know with relative ease mm -hmm. to make those renders so we're just going to dive in and just you know like you know jan is using you know, Blender now. He used to use Modo. Yeah. Uh, and 
so I think it's we want to discuss just sort of what's out there. You know what 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 are the tools that will help you? So Blender obviously is free. Yeah. Right, and and that's a such an important point because you know when I I personally use Maya, I'm trying to make the transition, which is going to be interesting yeah. to talk about because I'm actually in the middle of doing this transition to Blender. Right. Uh, because of what you were saying, there's support. Mm. I mean, I was trying to find how to do something. I was, I showed you the other day yeah. how to do it in V-Ray and Maya, mm. and I couldn't uh, find a good answer yeah. because there's just no support. So Blender is really good because there's support and it's free. Yeah, that's a big, that's a big part. So right? everybody can learn that. Yeah. Uh, you could be a student and do use it for its basic, you know, like 3D capabilities. Mm. It's free. Mm. It's uh, relatively easy to learn and tons of support. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's okay. So that's, you know, obviously Photoshop. That's yeah, it's, another software, right? I yeah, mean, that's 2D kind of, software. That's kind of the, the industry standard for, for better or worse. I mean, there's a lot of people hating on it for for the lack of innovation and that they always seem to fix a few things and then they break a few things as well. And everybody's telling me to like, oh, you should install the 2016 version. That's the best one. I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. Um, um but the, the the experiences seem to vary a lot. Like I in my in my career, I never had a single issue with Photoshop. I'm so, but I'm I seem to be the only one. Um, but yeah, but there's I think the, the the good thing about it these days is that there are so many good tools coming up. Um, and uh, there's Affinity Photo. There's um, like free options like Krita, and um, there's of course still I think is, is Painter still around? I have no idea. Painter's still around. I so I mean, there's that. a lot of. 2D painting programs. I mean, also uh, a lot of apps like Procreate that exist on mobile devices, iPads, um, that are really powerful mm. and can save up PSD files and can read PSD exactly, files. Exactly, and, yeah. and it's actually, you know, very useful. So it's good to evaluate your tools um, to, to help you as much as possible so that it's not like, you know, you're not using something that's uh, really lagging yeah. uh, in terms of like technology, right? You want something that's going to help you uh, with all the, the, the tools that you need, mm. really. But what's the downside of that now is that the better the software, the more complex the software, the more your hardware needs to be. Yeah, yeah. That is another you know. uh, problematic side effect. Yeah. But so... Let, let's start from the beginning, really. And like, so if, if somebody is new, like if somebody is looking to expand or, or, or do something like, uh, like the question is always, what, what should I learn? Like I get a lot of questions from, from my audience and potential audience asking like, oh, should I, should I learn Blender or should I, like, can I follow along in your, in, in your videos with a different app? Like, I don't know if I should go to do Blender. Like, um, it, it, it's mainly because I think it's because I'm advocating the use of it. I get mostly my, my questions are mostly about 3D. I don't get actually many t questions about, oh, should I use Photoshop? Everybody automatically defaults Yeah, that's to pretty that. straightforward. So, yeah. um, but I guess that's so the, the the interest really lies into in in 3D I think and people are I think because the the whole concept space kind of is moving not completely towards 3D but um, they see the benefit of of what it can offer um, to a traditional um, image making workflow. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, how like what what could we recommend somebody starting well, out mean, of, I, from I, from which angle should they approach I mean, this I question think, i think right now if you go anywhere if you you know doing concept design right now uh, i mean i'll speak for games <clears throat> yeah. and live action yeah and i'll tell you that if you don't know 3d it will be a problem right because not only are they sometimes asking for 3d files mm. now yeah, definitely. like hey can we have the model and all this kind of stuff there's the whole unreal thing where they want to plug your model into unreal right. now i mean i've right. talked to a lot of my fellow colleagues and they're like yeah they're taking our models and so we need to make something and i think it's one of those things where um you need to know some 3d right now how deep you want to get into that is up to you yeah. and your style right because but i think you know if you're plotting a complex uh perspective yeah and let's say your director says i want to change the angle well 
3D. You have to be in 3D. What are you going to redraw that yeah, all exactly, that angle? Right. So for me, it's crucial. So that's number one. H how do you feel about that? Like in, in the stuff that you're doing? Yeah, there's, I, there's, I think there's a multitude of, of, of things to consider, right? Um, it is, it, it, it can, like the use of 3D can be for something as basic as plotting perspective, right? But I think that's, that's really, that's already like, so like 2000, 2005 uh, kind of yeah, level of thinking, right? Like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's the least you should be using it for. Um, and yeah. how far you, like, like you rightly said, how far you want to push it is really up to you. There's only a certain, there's only, only up to a certain degree, I think, for us concept artists, it's going to be useful to push it in 3D, right? Um, because mostly what I'm handing into clients is like a, a, a block out um, or the, the concept model or however you want to talk uh, or you want to call it. Um, something that gives the, the artist, the environment artist, the hard surface artist down the, down the pipeline an idea of the proportions, the scale, um, how everything fits together, functionality. How often are you doing that? Um, it's pretty... I wouldn't I wouldn't call it it's expected but um it's definitely a talking point when when we're discussing uh, how we can work together usually the client will ask oh so how do you how do you work what's your workflow like and I usually say like oh I pretty much do everything in 3D and then they're like oh cool then we can blah 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 hand off the model so right now I'm on, I'm on a project and not only do I talk to the art director I also talk to the um to the VFX people and and they mm -hmm. take my models right away so I send it to them and then they plug it into the shot right away so there's no more no more waiting time right but like I said yeah, yeah. the how far you want to take it like I don't hand in final final shaded crazy detailed models to my clients and um, that's usually um that's usually where it stops like i i use the model to to again communicate with the various departments but then usually when i take it into a final then it really is only for like a, like a, like a, it's it's just for for reference basically they have the model they have the reference that i made like the beauty shot which like proper materials and lighting um and and they how much percentage would you say you use 3d in your work and 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 2d i i these days like it for clients it ranges anywhere from like i think 90 to 100 percent 3d I don't I don't do okay, much okay. I don't do much paint over anymore only for like and and it, have you ever noticed that <clears throat> the clients want more paint over or anything mm, I, I think honestly I don't I don't think my the clients I work with they don't care to be honest and they, and, and and you're going 3d because also you know if you want to change angles yeah you um, can you know it, are these are big factors maybe? yeah definitely flexibility mm. and iteration is is so much easier um for myself and it results in i think better designs um because like it's 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 difficult to reuse um, or iterate it on something that you only have a 2D painting on. Um, I mean, you can do it and then you can like bash it around and whatever. But if you have the actual model and you can iterate and, and reuse it multiple times, I think it, it, it results in, well, you can do more work and less time and the client also gets better, better solutions, I think. Um, out yeah, of it. no, absolutely. I mean, I, the worst nightmare is when, you know, I used to do, a lot of 2D stuff and mm. the client says, well, can you change the lighting? <laughs> uh, can you change the sure. angle? And, and I'm like, come on, I mean, what? And, and then, and so then you change it and it takes the same amount of, because yeah, they think exactly. change it. And then it's like, well, it's really quick, right? No, no, it's, you're yeah. redoing the whole damn painting. Exactly. So, so yeah, I mean, and, and so blender, uh, is that something you would recommend because, I mean, obviously you would recommend it, <laughs> yeah. otherwise you wouldn't be using it. But what's the power of it? Yeah, so I mean, um, I think a lot, of the, a lot of the reasons why I started using it exclusively, I, I feel are very personal. And I think it's, um, it's, uh, people, people should ask themselves not about what's popular, but they should ask themselves, like, how, how can this app, like benefit my workflow and how can it expand my workflow and does it does it kind of gel with generally how I work 
Um, so I, I noticed early on that that 3D really helps my workflow tremendously um, in in the way just I think and and the, in the way I like I, like in the way I like to build things to design things. It's really much much closer to a 3D workflow than than like a like a painting workflow. Um, it vibes with you. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it's it's it was. So why why Blender and not Modo? I'd so say. Blender ha had. I mean, the initial draw for me in, to get into Blender was was real time, um, the real time viewport. Um, it's called EV, and it, it's it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's pretty damn good. And it it kind of changes how you again. It changes a little bit how you design, how you approach things. If um, you can model and light and design at the same time all together. Like you have, you can, you can build your shaders, your lighting, everything you can model. And then you have how the thing will look like later on for final presentation right there. And you can, it kind of changes your, your thinking and it lets you make different decisions. Whereas the traditional kind of way was more like you, you, you model in a, in a block out and you pull vertices and you push things around. And, and then at some point you hit render and, then it takes like 10 minutes and then it looks like mm. looks like you get a coffee yeah, yeah it looks like crap and then you're like okay like i need to take some notes now i need to change this 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 and this because every time you hit render like you kind of your brain needs to be put on hold and you need to wait until you get the result for it to for you to come yeah i mean and for those iterate. of you that you know, nowadays, obviously, there's a lot more real time renders, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? You know, but Unreal, yeah. when I started out, uh, we were literally waiting 10 minutes, half an hour for a render. Yeah. I mean, this is way back. I'm talking like yeah. way, way back. Yeah. And you realize that you, it doesn't sound like much. 10 minutes doesn't sound like much. That means you have six renders in one hour. Exactly. And that means you can only tune it six times in one hour mm. and see the result. And so nowadays things have really progressed, you know, to the point where the viewport, you can look at it and it looks like so you can real time mm. see, you know, depth, you know, for me, that's the most powerful thing. And I think for people who are into more photography mm. and seeing depth separation, yeah, it's really important because you can see it in the viewport and you can make a lot of judgments yeah, exactly. right there because you can go, oh, OK, that's farther away. Oh, okay, and I can just take that, and I can make a couple of scribbles, and that's my sketch, good, and then I'll, you know, tune it some more, and then it's my final. Um, for me, it, it, it's like that, and I think it's helpful for people to know. So there's right now out there the popular software are Blender, mm. Modo, Max, yeah, I think Maya. Still, yeah. So I think these are the the hubs. Houdini, <laughs> Houdini, although is extremely complicated yeah. for concept people, I don't know unless you're super. I only know a few like, who use it. I only technical. know a few, yeah. I think I think those are like the big 3D packages. I think a lot of people in the, in the hard surface area using either Moi 3D or um, Fusion um, mm -hmm. for the really the crazy hard surface uh, cut related stuff. Um, and of course, there's like a variety. Of, like we can also talk about like in terms of render engines, right? That becomes more and, and of more course, important. Don't forget you know, ZBrush obviously course, is an industry standard for sculpting. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that is going to be very, you know, but then there's 3D code that also does good sculpting. Yeah, yeah. And then Blender has its sculpting capability. Yeah, 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 so exactly. the reason why I'm throwing all this out there and people are like, well, okay, yeah. that's not answering any questions <laughs> is that every, honestly, every software can pretty much do the same thing. Right. Yeah. You you know basically they're polygonal modelers mm. and and they have a rendering engine. Most software will yeah. have a rendering engine. They'll have a modeler module and they'll have a shader mm. uh, module where you can shade the thing. Right. So it's a matter of how they treat that thing. Number one. Right. Mm. How they treat those. Some will be better modelers and not so good renderers. Yeah. Some will be better renderers and not so good modelers. So it's how they treat it is how you know and interface ui because like forever zbrush like my wife looks at zbrush and says what am i looking at i <laughs> famously cryptic this. yeah yeah so i mean you know you have to look at what you want to get out of it mm. but they can all do similar things yeah, yeah yeah you know and and that's the thing that's really that's why we're doing this episode because it's so confusing like, what do you, what do you learn? Which one, you know, do you learn? Yeah. And I think price 
has a lot to do oh, with yeah, it. Definitely. Maya is extremely expensive. Yeah. So unless you're an animator and you need those animation tools, Maya probably you don't need it. Right. Like, you know, I, I, off the bat, Maya is known for its animation, not mm. for the rest. Right. Uh, I've used Maya since it first came out yeah. like 15 years ago. So it's an animation tool, but, you know, it's it's relatively decent in the other tool. Yeah. 3D Max is a... Uh, uh, also a good all rounder. Right. Uh, I, I don't. You. I think you've used 3D Max. Before, um, right? Only briefly. Only briefly, and never really got into it. Um, yeah, I think that. Yeah, so 3D yeah. Max is a good all rounder, right. you know, and they have all these renderers that you can plug in, you right. know, like Octane. There's a lot of compatibility, a lot of plugins for right. everything. And you can get V-Ray for Maya. You right. can get V-Ray for Modo. Right. So, I, I would say right now that, for me, I, I'm doing making the switch to the Blender. And I'll just use myself as an example. Right. Why am I doing that? The reason I'm doing it is because I want support. Right. And right now, support meaning there's no question I can ask that I won't find an answer for. Mm, pretty much. And yeah. that is important because if I need to do snow, I just go, okay, I need to do snow in Blender. There's some tutorial already. Vice versa, if I said, hey, I want to do that in V-Ray, you're not going to have any answers because right. no one's making a video of that for you. So it, uh, right off the bat, it's already like that's the pull. Right. And then also the real time rendering stuff is huge for me. Right. So I've decided that's huge. Mm. Blender has it. Right. So it's great. So I, I, that's why I'm taking the leap to learn that and going away from Maya. Right. I mean, and that's really the only reason. Mm. And, I, and I own V-Ray. I mean, V-Ray is an expensive piece of software. Right. I own it. And I'm still going, no. Because I, I want to go faster. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know. Uh, that real-time yeah, I mean, aspect I doesn't seem like much, right? I mean, the f it's like I've always wondered, like, okay, so I can I can maybe use Octane or whatever and, like, just throw an insane amount of graphics cards behind it and I can get closer to real time but it, there's there's still a difference um it's 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 minuscule but it it in the end in in how you um design is it, it makes a big difference um if you're real time or yeah and I, real I love time. the fact that um, blender is so uh they're trying so hard to do so many things yeah there's even blender in vr mm. you can use the grease pencil to draw on your model yeah, there, that's, there's that's a, crazy you know there, there's so many things that will help you do your task right. now and actually make it a fun and enjoyable experience yeah. that i think that uh, I mean, if anybody asked me, that's I would re I would recommend mm. that hands down. Now I, I don't know animation. I'm not speaking for animation. So yeah, I, I, mean, I only do like, very basic yeah. things, basically like camera yeah. animations and stuff. So yeah. I also can't speak too much. But I mean, you see, you see all the other people that are that are uh, really getting popular now and who have actually been using Blender for a long time, that are really gaining traction now um, and that do like. They do like movies in Blender. It's like crazy. I mean, is it the best tool to make a movie? I don't know, right? I mean, he's like the people are doing well, like green okay, screening, so, camera tracking, and all sorts yeah. of stuff. And you can do it. You right? can do a mm. lot. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, the reason why it's not more popular than it is, is because that uh, it's not a proven production proven right, tool. Right. Right. So. But, you know, we're not a production. Yeah, like, for us, it doesn't know. matter that much, I think, for concept. That is true, right? We don't, we're not like, we're not compositors or whatever and, or mad painters um, who have to deliver, I don't know, nuke scripts to other people. We don't have to do that. So we're a bit more or, flexible. Or, or it's not just use studio-wide. Right, right, right. I mean, right. You know, I'm in my own studio. Exactly. So as long as that works, I'm good to go, you know. So I think... It, I think, and it's, they have a lot of plugins and all this stuff. Yeah. And it may sound like, oh, I'm so high on the Blender train. Look, honestly, I'm whatever helps me. Yeah, that's that's, uh, that's, that's something we need to get back to, yeah, um, to talk about. Yeah, I mean, and, and I may, I may just like, and sometimes, uh, you know, and this is the, the, the strategy that I have. I have no time to waste on learning software. Yeah. And I, I always tell people that if you want to learn Maya to, enough to do concept work, mm. I can teach it to you in one hour. Right. I can teach it to you in one hour and you'll know how to do the most important things. Right. The problem is a lot of people go through this and they're they're sitting there learning everything they don't need to learn. 
Right. So you really have to focus on, you know, first getting the hang of the UI and then, you know, and then learning the tools you need to learn. And a lot of times when you go on YouTube, uh, there's so many videos that will teach you that, yeah. that it's, it's just your pick basically mm. now. It's, it's a much easier way to learn yeah. than just going through every button going, what does this do? You know, yeah, and yeah, before exactly. you know, you it's three days that. in. And <laughs> yeah. And you still can't do anything. Um, but so let, let me go a bit back here and, um, now, do, do you feel ever at any point that, um, because I think there, there's, a, there's a, maybe, I think a little bit of a misconception that um, like the, the software will do a lot of things for you. Um, when, while it does, um, I think it's still very important to remember that the, the, the tool cannot design for you or it cannot teach you any of the fundamentals. And um, you need to, I think we need to constantly remind ourselves not to, rely on one piece of software too much or use it as a crutch um and and i feel like we've been talking so much about blender that we, we we need to remind people that um if you if like if you're a designer and i take let's say blender away from you if you suddenly can't design anymore um you you need to reevaluate what you're doing and, and how you're doing it, I think. Um, the, the, the premise still needs to be that you can design with the absolute most simple tools possible. Now that, of course, it doesn't mean you can draw on a napkin and then you can hand that into your uh, art director, right? They will, still, um, um, they will still want a proper presentation um, and you can do that in whatever app you want. But um, I think we, we need to we need to remind people that um, don't don't rely on all these uh, technicalities and complexities to express your designs um, entirely. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's a mm. tool, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's like if you don't have a pencil and you have a pen, mm. you can use the pen. Uh, of course, you try to use the most appropriate tool. Right. right? I'll, I'll just say like when I was on Matrix, mm. I went in there right. thinking, you know, I'm on Matrix, right? So I'm going to tell the director, Lana, I'm going to say, hey, Lana, I, you know, I can port this into Unreal. You right. can put on the goggles. You know, you're going to love that, right? Because it's the Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, no, I want you to draw. Okay. Yeah. I want to see drawings. And, and, and I was sitting in the room with George Hall, and he's like, you know, so good that, you know, you're kind of going, oh, crap. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I hadn't drawn in years. Right. But... I went home and I practiced, practiced, you know, I try to get the feeling back, you know, mm. and ultimately in the end, you know, I, I turned in a lot of drawings, right? Uh, not, not all, but you know, you never know what's going to be required of you also. So just, you knowing software doesn't get you anywhere. Mm. Like Definitely. you, you need to have the design sense and everything that, that, you know, make those decisions look good. Right. So you, you know, you, Honestly, on that job, you could have drawn on a napkin, and if it looked good, it would have. Okay, oh, that's, that's it. That's, that's good. That's good. <laughs> it does happen, and yeah. not very often, yeah. but it does happen. But don't try to impress with your crazy renders and superior knowledge of 3D, because right. then it, you know, what it really makes you. And and here's, you know, this is a sensitive thing that I'll say right now is, a lot of people say, learn Unreal, learn Unreal, learn this thing, learn that thing, and I'm like. I always tell those people, do you really want to learn Unreal? Because ultimately, in the end, unless you're making your own short or whatever, if you're working on a job, you're going to end up being an Unreal operator. Exactly. Do you want that? Do, or do you want to be a designer? Exactly. And if you want to be a designer, maybe, in, you know, the, the big question is, like, do you spend time learning this software or do you spend time doing more art? That's yeah. another value. I asked myself that question last week. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. What am I doing? Yeah. I'm learning all this stuff. I spent a week learning, you know, gravity mm. sketch and yeah, then I'm yeah, learning yeah. Blender. And I'm going, oh, my God. And, you know, like I, I could have done three paintings. Right, right. But you have to temper it with, well, is this software going to help yeah, me yeah, that's create? Yeah, that's the crucial point. Yeah. Right. If it's going to help me create, then it's a good tool. But if I'm just doing it mm. because everybody's doing it and then it's going to make some render and I can throw some kit bash stuff in it and then, oh, here is some render and looks good. There's no substance to the design. Then it's still not going to be good. Right. Right. So, I, you know, I think definitely make sure you ask that question. Yeah. But having tools at your uh, disposal. I mean, I'm all about just learn, just focus. If you really want to be a sculptor, 
forget all this other stuff. Go, go learn ZBrush. Right, right, right. You know, and, and you know, but there's so many. Th- oh, I'm going to learn a render and I'm going to just keep it simple. I mean, that's what I say. What do right. you say? Yeah. I mean, it, it from, like you said, it's about w- what goal are you trying to achieve and how can that tool that you're learning really help um, express that or reach that goal? I We are all distracted by all the cool things. And then like somebody else is using, I don't know, 3D code. Somebody else is using Fusion 360. Uh, somebody else is using Houdini, right? And then we're like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. But in the end, you always have to come back to the question like, what 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 do you want to produce? What's the what's the end goal? And how can that um, app, that tool, help you express um, that the best and 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 most efficient way? And, yeah, exactly. And I mean, in the end, it, it comes back to the opening question. Like, I want I want to get to back to the opening question through this asking, like, um, because people now stopped maybe asking what brush do you use, and they, they ask what software do you use. And, yeah, what software? <laughs> and I'm I'm wondering, like, so um, because a lot of people, like us included, say, like, okay, like the you should be able to design if you if you want to be a designer you should be able to design with, with whatever tool you have available to you right and if one tool fails it should not stop you from designing basically but i'm wondering right does does this software when when we often say like oh software doesn't matter um but does it really not matter um i think I think it does to a certain extent. Um, well, I it think does it also matter. depends on how comfortable you are. Like, okay, so I know people <clears> who <throat> are using super old software, like Vitaly uses Softimage. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. still using it, and yeah. that thing is dead. There's no more. Like, there's the company doesn't exist. But that's a good. Right. There's a good example of him saying, "I like what it does. Mm. I'm fast in it." Yeah why do I need to, you know, but, but okay, I'll, I'll port it out the model. I'll port it out to Keyshot and I'll render it there right. or I'll render it somewhere else. But I like that tool and I'm all for that. I mean, Hey, if you're using the stuff you're using and you don't need more, right. And you're going fast and it's helping you design then Why are you learning new software? You only, for me, like why I'm making the switch is because I want more. Right. Right. I want that viewport. I want that yeah. real time. I want to see my shot so I can choose the angles better. Mm. That's why I'm switching. Otherwise, right, right. I wouldn't switch. Right. So for me, is that decision, and and it and it, I think it absolutely matters because right. some software can open up your creativity. Right. Because I I'll just say this experience. I I'm trying to use Gravity Sketch, which is a VR tool, right. and it's it, it's a surfacing tool. But mm. I was able to get the thing that I'm designing now in a better place because I could see it in a different way and it opened up my creativity. And I think that's a valuable tool. Right. So for me, software is absolutely important, but it cannot be everything. Exactly. Right. That's a good way to say it. So um, one, one thing I've seen a lot online and what I'm asking myself, and maybe you can share your thoughts on that. That's like, I see, I see some artists, are using like like these days it's like it's it's quite popular to just list all the apps that you've been using in the creation of an image and like some people like they say like oh like um like hard surface done in 3d studio max sculpting in zbrush um and then like um i don't know uh, um um like the cloth simulation and marvelous designer rendering in in octane and and uh, finishing in i don't know uh, uh, da vinci resolve or whatever and like they, they list like 10 programs and then somebody mm-hmm. else just does like this list like one like is, is there like <laughs> i think people are getting very confused and some try to emulate and pile up pile on as many different programs yeah, as I'm... possible but like is there really any difference is there, does it really matter does anybody care except for like all the the hashtags you can add no, on I mean, social I think, media? I think it is good in a way, it, you know, because some people might want to know, oh, well, how was that created? Because mm. um, I know, like, like, I mean, I know my wife will put, you know, like she used Medium yeah, yeah. and then rendered in Keyshot because I think it's important that people know, yeah. especially if you're do, using some newer or different tools, that, hey, I did this in VR. Right. Oh, crap. oh, it can okay, be, it can be helpful. Good. Yeah, it can be helpful. Yeah. Definitely. But if it's just like a million things, I mean, I guess it can't really hurt, you know, like, 
Um, I, I don't know. I mean, personally, for me, I don't ever list anything because I don't <laughs> because I, I don't think it matters. I think are you looking at the image or are you looking at what how I did the image? You don't. Why should you care about how you should look at yeah. the image? If, it, if you dig it, you dig it. Yeah, but it has kind of become an entity of its own, I think, to a certain degree. And I'm just wondering what, what you thought about, like, do you use like a specialty program for everything? There are some advocates for that. Or do you, do you try to um, um, yeah. kind of like have an uninterrupted flow staying yeah, within so, I one mean, app? I, I, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of switching back and forth. Mm. But I know that like right now, the project I'm working on, I'm using ZBrush, mm. I'm using Gravity Sketch, mm. and I'm using, you know, Blender slash Maya yeah. because I'm trying to make the switch. Right. But, you know, like I don't want to have to do all that. But ZBrush is better at sculpting. Right. Uh, I can't help that, mm. so I'm using that. And then uh, Gravity Sketch is better for surfacing and getting my ideas out quickly. Yeah. So then I'll take that into Maya, and then I'll use it there. And then Maya, I kind of right now is the hub where I bring everything in and right. finish it off and mm. render and do all that stuff, which, you know, Maya and Blender are interchangeable. So, I mean, that's that's what I'll do. Uh, and, you know, it's it's it, it can get complicated. Mm. But I think that, you know, once you get used to that flow, I don't know that there's going to be one software that can just do everything perfectly. Yeah, probably but not. Right. like, you know, OK, so Blender, if you take Blender, for example, you can you can sculpt the, the clothes so you don't need Marvelous Designer. Yeah. You can sculpt the creature so you don't need ZBrush. And you can render it so you don't need Keyshot or right. V-Ray or whatever. So you can actually do it all there. Yeah. But it's not going to be best at everything. No, it's not going to be the best. I think for, for a lot of stuff, though, um, for concept especially, I think it, a lot of it is actually good enough. That's what I'm kind of like. Yeah. Okay, no, no, it's it, good it enough. Is absolutely is good enough. Um, I think it also depends on your ratio, right? right. How, how much render versus paint right so me uh i i fluctuate i sometimes i'm 50 50 mm. uh like i'll get a, just a real kind of baseline render and i'll go uh, to town sometimes i'm like 95 5 mm, right and that you know it just depends on the image right you know it just depends right if i'm trying to go painterly i, I might not need so much to render every material because you can get you can get thrown into this 3d you know hole really deep i mean this is a good one like how far do you take it right. in 3d right because you can spend days trying to tweak a render right you know and, and or just kind of roughing it out and then going to photoshop and yeah that's always the i mean it, for me and, and uh, people ask me like also how do you how far do you take it what's the what's the golden ratio of how much 3d versus how much 2d they they are hoping for some kind of magic number that they can that they can just hit and then they can move on like confidently into something else, right? But for me, it's never like that. It, it, it's a mixture of what I personally like to do and how I like to do things. Like, oh, if I want to learn more 3D, then I'll push further in 3D. If I, if I want to know how to do a simulation, then I'll figure out how to do that because I know it will help me um, further down the line with this project. But the other, the other factor is also just deadlines. Like, when, when is it due? How can I get the best result possible? Then I kind of roughly know, okay, I have this much time to spend on the 3D, this much on the render, and this much on just p touching it up in the end, right? That is the ultimate um, goal for me, even even when it comes to like um, personal stuff. I, I have that, that that mindset is very much ingrained into my... Do, do you think 3D workflow. is helping you with the speed? Oh, definitely. Like mm, okay. insanely. Like it, there's always that, that time in the beginning when I'm just building up a scene and it, it feels like I'm, I'm wasting time. But then uh, a few days down the road, I'm still noodling around on that same scene, um, just with slight alterations, different angles. And then suddenly like things that would have taken me to like 10 hours to repaint everything are now taking five minutes. So have that free time to, I don't know, make the design better, give more angles, give more varieties to the to the client. Um, and also be able to hand over the model. Right? Exactly. I mean, that kind of, um, let, let's segue into like just a, a little um, thing here. Like, how come we're seeing such an explosion of, of 3D um, these days and, and, and how how the, the, the kind of very varied um, 
uses of 3D um, because before it used to be like just blockouts or like people were using it for hard surface for like small contained models or only for characters but these days you see like full-blown crazy environments with lots of details not only being used by like um, like um, environment artists in games or even for like final shots for um, f from entire movie studios doing like I don't know avatar scale environments like now like single artists are like um, rendering in entire landscapes with millions of trees on their own machine right so i think that right now there's like a crucial or like these days there's a crucial turning point in in terms of like high-end software being available for free or software that can do everything like blender like krita whatever and other solutions like da vinci uh, has a free version houdini has a free version right there's basically no more barriers in terms of um oh, i can't i can't spend ten thousand dollars on on 3d studio max or whatever right those times are gone i mean and then also computers are getting more powerful like ever evolving like you can buy like 32 core 64 core machines um, crazy amount of graphics cards um, and that can handle basically like any kind of amount of 3d kit bashing you don't really need to care about topology anymore if you have if you have the if you have good hardware right higher and higher poly counts are possible millions of instances of trees and other stuff and um, really um, like photogrammetry as well like people go around with their cameras or even like I know with my phone, I go around, take pictures, and then you have um, like basically um, applications that put these things together for you into a, a th fully like textured 3D model that looks like, in, if you do it well, looks like photo, completely photo real. And um, I think all these kind of things are working together now to, to be able to have people build like com crazy 3D environments. Um, um, by themselves in, at home on their on their home machine, right? Um, and I think there's there's a lot of big things happening right now, and and I think it, it's going to be very interesting where where and how we're getting, like how how this will evolve in the next couple of years. Because I mean, computers are getting still more and more powerful all the time, and I think the next generation of like I don't know like Ryzen uh, CPUs, the next generation of of um, NVIDIA cards and yeah, I mean, bigger, you know, better headsets, always, right? It's yeah, crazy. It's always going to get more powerful. Yeah. It's always going to, you know, and, and, and the truth is, you know, the, the reason why we are where we are is because it's evolved. I mean, you know, maybe even 10 years ago, yeah. we didn't have all these assets you can just yeah, plug exactly. in. So then you got to build it. So then you got to know how to model it. So then you have to know how to texture it. So there right. was a lot more that's being done for you yeah. now. And of course, hardware is getting more powerful mm. but ultimately again the disclaimer is you can have the fastest machine yep. best software if your design is awful it will be awful it, yeah, it well, will of just course. be it will, it will just be a beautifully rendered awful design exactly and that that i mean that that will always be there right it's yeah, so um, just you know but if you're a good designer here's where i say spend the money right right spend the money like Okay, I gotta buy two graphics card that cost me uh, four thousand bucks. Spend it, because you know what? In the end, the time it saves you right. in just looking at it real time, you you're going to you know it's gonna right. pay for itself in one job. Exactly. But if you don't do it, you're gonna sit there and wait, and and have old software and crashes and the hardware is like, mm. you know, like I have some friends who are still like using really old computers, right. and they're going, oh, it's fine, it's fine. But as soon as they get the new hardware, oh my God, I can't believe yeah, I mean, how it's, faster it all is. I mean, with, and that's not really software. Yeah. That's more just willing to invest in hardware. Yeah, exactly. I mean, with 2D, it didn't, it didn't used to matter that much, right? You can still use a 10-year-old iMac or whatever, and you can still paint beautiful pictures on it, right? But once you get yeah, into 3D and everything, then hardware will exponentially be more important, right? And I mean, again, without saying that software or hardware is going to make your design better, but um, if your design is good, then you have so many more possibilities. Like in, if you have like six graphic cards in, instead of two, right? Then you can suddenly actually get into animation.
and uh, and, and build animations in 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 octane or redshift or whatever um and you don't have to spend like uh, days and weeks waiting for all your frames to render out because you can do it so much faster right if if animation is something you want to get into right if, it's it should still be driven by the kind of thing you want to do right exactly and yeah. um so yeah but i mean uh, and then you know you have all, also you know like you, you want, we're still in hardware you know mm. like mac or pc you know that's another you know yeah. a lot of people <laughs> fight uh, over you know what you should use you know i mean i know you you kind of use both right um, i i wanted to i want to use both yeah um i'm still very much a, a mac person because it's just the, the operating system the ui and everything just suits myself better and i have a long history of mac um and and i've never had a single machine fail on me i used to have a pc and that stuff like uh, crept out on me so many times that i decided to to ditch it um but yeah, you're gonna run into into problems if you want to do very hardware intensive GPU rendering tasks because the Mac is just very much behind in that. There are there are um, there are changes coming, um, but um, yeah, if you need power right now and a, a good value as well, um, power to money value, then then there's no way around a PC and it, it's come a long way. So I, I can't deny that. Um, the days of windows 95 are, are truly gone. Yeah. Um, but, um, one thing though, right. W would you, I mean, you said like, we said like, okay, people need to, people, sh people should invest. If you want to do 3d design, you should invest in, in good hardware. But do you feel like, um, people are going to be, people are not going to be able to do good stuff without, the latest machine like will people be outpriced by others like let's say person a has can afford four graphics cards of the latest generation and uh, person b only has like a i don't know three generations ago like a like just one on a really old pc like do you feel like oh the one person can say like oh i don't have the latest hardware i can't afford it so i can't do good design kind of stuff like, oh i mean no that? i mean i think no, no, no. I mean, obviously, design, strong design, strong design. Right. But I think it depends on you know what what stage you're at, right? If you're a student mm. versus if you're a professional, right. and depends if you're like you know like a power superpower user. If your style is, you know, if your like your particular style is doing a lot of 3D renders, mm. then the faster the car, the less the time. Right. I mean, it's just the way, you know, you and, and the less the yeah, time, the physics. more iterations. Right. The more iterations, the faster you can show sketches. Right. And then, you know, that you're, the easier you meet the deadline. Right. You know, ultimately, it works like that. So, you, you know, if you're wait, sitting here waiting for a render, you're still sitting here. Right. See, that's the thing. Yeah. And, and just because things are real time doesn't mean that your final render, you still have to wait. Right. Right. It's, you know, so I think ultimately it depends on how you use it and whether it makes sense for you. Right. Uh, if you're a heavy 3D user and you do a lot of renderings, it makes every bit of sense to get right. the, the best hardware you can buy. Right. It, it doesn't mean, hey, look, if you can only afford last year's cards, you do that. Uh, you do what you can. But I, I always tell people like, don't cheap out now, right. you know, because a lot of people, ah, that's too much to spend. You know, I don't need to. But I'm like, but you're going to save money in the end. Right. And I, I don't know how many times I've talked to people where they go, yeah, my, my stuff is completely broken down. I, now, I, I, you know, in the middle of a job. Now what right. I do? Because they're using such old hardware right. and it can't deal with the software. The software is asking a lot of the hardware and they're getting constant crashes right. and all the, ah, what do I do now? I'm like, go get yourself some graphics cards. That's yeah. what you do. I, I'll get a new computer while you're at it because your computer is six years old. Yeah. Yeah. My, 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 I don't have a rule, but like my, my kind of cycle of, of upgrading is usually that, um, I, I usually get the best that I can afford at that point in time. And I switch usually every like three to four years. Um, that's quite maybe yeah, that's I mean, quite maybe yeah. quite long drawn out, but I feel well, like I usually you know that's fine. That's yeah, that's, that's fine. when it has significantly. That that's when I can feel a significant bump in performance. I think if I upgrade every year, then I think it would be just um, you would be just having like I don't know ten or twenty percent increments. But I think every three or four years, you, yeah. You, but you, I, you know, this. keep in mind though, if you're a two D user mm. mainly, right, and you're using Photoshop. Mm. 
um, then I say, don't worry so much. Yeah, about yeah, that's it. true. That's true. Uh, I I would say, you know, maybe spend that money and getting uh, like a nicer monitor or, or get an iPad with right. Procreate. Exactly. You yeah. know, I would you know you I would say try different ways of doing it so that it makes your two D painting. Uh, easier uh, there, there's not much you can do by going faster right? right because photoshop it's you know it's not really laggy it shouldn't be yeah, yeah it shouldn't be really laggy so you could put 10 graphics cards it won't make a difference yeah exactly you know that's photoshop and that's 2d mm. painting uh some apps i uh, photoshop does use a G gpu uh yeah. acceleration yeah. but it's not a it's not a big one yeah so I would, you know, a CPU is still right. quite important. So setting up your machine for 2D, right. you know, I, I would say you, you, you're pretty okay with whatever you yeah. go with. Just have enough memory. I think don't cheap yeah, out on memory. Yeah. That's def oh, definitely true. I think also just generally, if you get into 3D, like it helps to understand. And I mean, I'm I'm not a technical person myself. Um, not not overly. I don't I don't want to dive into all these technical aspects too much because I've. Feel like it keeps me from focusing on on the design job um, but i think what you need to do at least to a certain degree is that you need to understand if you're really heavily investing in 3d what specifications will really benefit the apps you're using right now and and the ones that are planning to use does it does it matter how much RAM it has? Does it matter if you have an SSD or not? Does it matter how many CPU cores and how fast each core is? Like which graphics cards are really gonna benefit your your apps? Is it is it the one like is it the 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 the, the fastest card or is it the, the the card with the most memory? Which kind of video memory do you mm, yeah. does it need? Right? It it helps to. Um, understand what what your software really is going to benefit from instead of just buying like the latest and greatest or buying whatever everybody else has right yeah so, you, you get all the stuff and, and it doesn't use it then yeah you're then wasting what's the money point right sense, yeah. um what's because really you know point? video cards will they're coming with new ones every year yeah so whatever you spent last year and you think it's the best it's not gonna be of this course. year don't you know, but I mean, I, I my rule in getting hardware is always get the best thing you can afford mm -hmm. at that time, right. because then it 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 it, uh, it lengthens the life of that hardware. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, you know, because then it, even in three years, it's still reasonable. Mm. But a lot of people are like, oh, hey, that's really cheap, and they get like a, a like an oh, i7, uh, okay. and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, it's okay, but you know, we're already on another chipset, right. so. It's probably not mm. the best thing, but you know, I, I don't want to sound like we're geeking out either. No, 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 definitely. I don't. I, I really don't like that kind of stuff. I don't really like talk about. Yeah, I mean, I'm like graphics cards. Not a bit, like, I'm not big into hardware, yeah. but I, 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 what I hate the most is when I need the power mm. and I don't have it, exactly. and I, that frustrates me to no and end it, because I'm like, what the hell? It wastes man? it wastes your time and it wastes your money because in the end, then you'll you'll have to buy the other one anyway. And the, yeah, and and you're frustrated. Yeah, exactly. And, and that, but. The thing is, at that moment when you need it, it's always on a job. Of course. And you can't just buy it like now. Exactly. I mean, you have to wait. And then now you're kind of going, okay, this stuff is, keeps crashing. Yeah. And now I can't do it. And I need a million trees. And yeah. it can't do that. Yeah. And then you're like, I wish I would have gotten that. <laughs> so yeah. for the professionals. But for the students, yeah. definitely go you know, go for the software that's not going to break the bank yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and gives you the most bang for buck. Yeah. Yeah. Be sensible. In yeah, that which regard, is yeah. in my, in my opinion, it's going to be blunder. <laughs> it's hard. It's I mean, hard to beat that value proposition. I mean, I'm, yeah, I, I don't, can't be free. <laughs> yeah. That's really hard. I mean, I don't want to say that. I mean, saying that blender is free is is i find it a bit misleading i mean of course the software doesn't cost anything but of you need to have decent hardware to run it right thankfully but it's free as a piece of yeah, software yeah, free as a piece of software but i mean and, and, well we should go into like at least quickly about the plugin oh yeah yeah that's, that's what i'm gonna part. say right you need to have decent hardware to run the thing is the, the thing is that the good thing is that blender kind of it can use whatever whatever you throw at it um cpu gpu it, 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 you, you're going to get something out of it some image but of course um, a lot of people are advocating using a lot of plugins and there are many good ones that can save you a lot of time and those um it, it's great that there is such a big community of third-party plugin developers just just be aware that some of these will cost you money 
um, and I think it's money well spent because usually you get, you don't have to like message some kind of email to some corporate uh, email account and then you never heard back like in for other big software companies. Usually you're talking to the developer like directly and they're usually very good at responding and fixing things and pushing out an update right away. Um, so that that's that's a pretty cool a pretty cool thing to be honest. I haven't seen that with any other with any other app to be honest that you have such a vast yeah ecosystem. i mean I, yeah. i'm not using any plugins mm. right now and and so far i i find that it's it does uh, when you learn it, yeah when you learn it's yeah, a bit it does, tricky it does, yeah it does okay and 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 i i feel like you know because i i've learned i mean i i mean i've used max mm. i've used 3d coat i use maya zbrush right. i've used all these software i haven't used moto but i i just really feel like you know if you really gave me a pick right now and they were all yeah. free I would probably still choose um, Blender. Yeah, yeah um, no, it's it's you can't actually at this point you can't go wrong with it because yeah, there's so much. If you want to get in, so like we're not you, sponsored. No, by no, Blender, no, we're not sponsored way. by <laughs> Blender or AMD or Nvidia or anybody. Um, we just we're just talking about what we personally use, right? And we don't. I mean, we don't want to sound like Blender fanboys, but I mean, if you're looking to get into 3D at this point in time and you're in in the in the concept design illustration field and you want to add that as your skill set there's i mean it's it's hard to make a case against um blender if you're looking for like a general purpose package right if of course if you have a very specific need and you want the best sculpting app or you want the best uh, whatever it is right then of course that might be found somewhere and, else and the but learning yeah the learning yeah. aspect if you want to learn it yeah uh and you can just go onto YouTube and you will yeah. find every, I mean, every video you need from beginning yeah, to specific things. Yeah. It, that is very yeah, useful. Yeah, yeah, very much so. so. I can't say more yeah. about that. I mean, that's that's why I'm switching. Yeah, <laughs> maybe let's let's wrap up this episode um, with like, do you have any, do you have any things that you are in particular looking forward to that are kind of announced or on the horizon or like where things you think, where are the things going to in terms of software, in terms of hardware, maybe in the next five to 10 years? I don't know. Is there anything that you're particularly excited I'm, about or? Yeah, I think I'm most excited about uh, the VR stuff mm -hmm. um, because for me, I'm in VR and that's a space where you can actually be very intimate with the object you're trying to design right. and create. So I, I think as a design tool for me, I'm very excited to see where that goes. Right. To, mean, to, to see a more mature implementation of, yeah, of what exactly. VR can right, be. Right, right, right now I'm doing some stuff in there and there are limitations right. uh, because it's still very young, I think. Uh, but it, but I like where it's going and I'm I'm very curious to see where that's going to go. Right, right that, right. that that would be for me. What about for you? Um, there, I mean, there's so many things in my brain is always being pulled left and right. Um, I'm, but I'm mostly what I'm looking forward to and something that I hope will come very, very soon and um, is, is um, real-time um, path tracing. So to have basically the best of both worlds because... Um, I like the look. Well, why don't you explain what that yeah, is? Yeah, so so that, yeah. So basically, I mean, the the way that like something like EV in Blender works right now is, or Unreal works right now, is that um, they're real time, but they're still um, behaving kind of like a like a game engine. And I I don't know how it technically honestly works, um, but it's it's. So basically, no the, the, reflections. Yeah, uh, there's no light, lighting. no proper light calculation happening. It doesn't look. Okay. You have to work really, really hard to get it to look realistic. Um, mm -hmm. And often that, even even in EV, that still works with like baked lighting and like basically you have to let it calculate the bounce light and then it's kind of like there. You can still rotate the viewport or whatever, but if you make any changes to it, um, you have to recalculate it. Update. So, um, but to have the best of both worlds would mean then then you have the quality or close to the quality of something like octane or redshift um but you have it in real time and by by all accounts i think we're going to see something uh, later this year or maybe next year um with i think we still need more powerful hardware to be able to calculate all that but i mean companies like otoy who does octane or or redshift 
um, they're all working on v on, on real time versions of their of their render engines and that i think is just um that'll be really exciting it's not something like out far in the future or anything it's just something i think very immediate hopefully um and that's what i'm really really excited about um i don't i don't even want to get into the whole ai thing because i think it's a bit it's a bit um to i don't know um it's a trendy word and and everybody's like oh is, is ai gonna like take over my job or whatever i don't, I don't think that's gonna happen um i think if anything it will co well, I mean, complement it's, it's, and change it's a good it's a good wrap right because mm. you know we can wrap it up by just saying look i mean again the disclaimer is a good designer is a good designer exactly and ai is not a good designer. AI no. is a good iterator. Yeah, that's, that's it, a good point. It will point. guess yeah. things, yeah. but I, you will still have to make the decision to pick something to right. do something with it. So in the end, it's still about you and your art and how you right. think and design and, and your creativity. Exactly. This is all just tools. Like you could use no tool or you could use all the tools. It's up to you. But at least hopefully after hearing this, you'll know a little bit more about what our decision processes are when we make right. the you know decision on hardware and software, you know, and hopefully it's helped you, right. you know. What a perfect way to wrap up this episode, I have to say. Yeah. Such a motiv <laughs> so, some motivating words here. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, that's it for this episode. Um, thanks again for tuning in. And as usual, like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. All right, see ya. See ya.